It's a, it's a real honor and a privilege to be introduced by Professor Matthews. And uh, once again, thank you, CLPR, the fabulous team which you all are, to organize this space uh, for some of us to voice our concerns and our dissent. Um, it is a very important day today. <clears throat> and I remember when uh, Jenna and I, we were speaking uh, about the possibility of a physical meeting and we were discussing the dates, I think she was so correct in suggesting also the, you know, coincide, coinciding this with 6th of December uh, will be particularly relevant uh, considering what this date signifies for this country. Given the times that we have lived in the past and obviously the times that we are living in currently. So I just wanted to sort of start with one image, which is image one. So this is uh, an image that I wanted to begin uh, the conversation with. This is from um, the film um, Ram Ke Naam by Anand Patwardhan, which, whom, which many of you may have seen, but I, I was quite struck by this image, uh, uh, which is, a which is, and this is a screenshot from that particular film. Okay, so I just want to cut to uh, cut to 2014 uh, because I want to talk about what 2014 and uh, meant for us, um, those of us who are connected with the issue of trans persons' rights. So 2014, as we all know, uh, is a watershed year uh, in the discourse of trans persons, transgender rights. But there is also a, like a small um, prehistory to 2014, which I'd like to sort of flag. And I would like to bring it to the NALSA petition that was filed by the, the Legal Service Authority. Um, and I just wanted to talk uh, so to point to two facts, and this is that there were two petitioners. Uh, so so the, there was petitioner number one, who was Pujaya Mata Naseeb Kaurji, Women Welfare Society, which was a society, which was a registered association, um, which sought relief in respect of the Kinner community. And this I'm quoting, a transgender, a TG community. The, the second petitioner was Lakshmi Narayan Tripathi, who claimed to be a hijra and has also got impleded so as to effectively put across the cause of the members of the transgender community and Tripathi's life experiences also for recognition of their identity as a third gender over and above male and female. Tripathi says that non-recognition of the identity of hijras a TG community as a third gender denies them the right of equality before the law and equal protection of law guaranteed under Article 14 of the Constitution and violates the rights guaranteed to them. The reason I'm reading these, uh, these two specific references out is, is because I'm going to sort of talk about the shift that happens since uh, the petition was filed and since uh, the verdict was pronounced in April 2014. So it's interesting that uh, while the 2014 Nalsa verdict was pronounced uh, in April, uh, what happens also in April is that the Rights of the Transgender Persons Bill 2014 was passed in the Rajya Sabha on the 24th of April, uh, unanimously with cross-party support. And this was a private member's bill introduced by uh, the MP from Tamil Nadu, Tiruchi Seva. And it was the first private member's bill passed since the, in, in, the, in, the, in the last 45 years. Okay, so these are, these are just basically mileposts that I'm sort of flagging. In May 2014, 26 May to be precise, the NDA government with, the, uh, with Prime Minister Narendra Modi is sworn in. So I'm kind of curious about, I mean, about, the, about the, these timelines. 
We know uh, the government is sworn in. Um, there's a lot of uh, back and forth that happens in, in the realm of trans persons' rights. Uh, the, 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 the Turuchi Seva bill, we do not know what happens to it. Only until 2016, when we hear that the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment of, the, of, of this new government uh, seeks comments from the Rights of Trans Persons bill because they have drafted a bill, the bill of 2015. They draft this bill in 2015. They seek uh, responses. Responses do come in. And uh, in August 2016, the Trans Persons uh, Bill 2016, the, the 2016 edition, is introduced in the Lok Sabha. And on a preliminary, preliminary reading, there are many aspects of this bill which, are, which remained as problematic as ever. And some were in direct violation of the Supreme Court's Nalsa ruling. So we, un, we, we kind of witnessed from 2016 onwards the, the sort of flip-flop that the state starts doing. It is a much watered down version of the 2015 draft bill that was circulated by the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. And it seemed to have taken none of the suggestions that was offered by the community and groups uh, that, that offered those suggestions. And in, in retrospect, it appeared that the private member bill of Tiruchi Siva, was the, it, which was the strongest, uh, was kind of sort of let, you know, let to perish. Okay, cut to November 2018. A video was available in the public domain. The video is no longer available in that, in, on that URL. Um, and two days following this video, on 6th of November, the National Daily Indian Express, uh, through its article, uh, writes that the Kinder Akhara bats for the Ram Temple in Ayodhya, second term for Prime Minister Modi. Um, and here, the, the news report sort of quotes that the Akhil Bharatiya Sant Samiti invited the Kinder Akhara for the first time. This shows the openness of the Vedic Sanatan Dharma and that it is open to the transgender community. Today, it was clearly said, Jo Ram ka hai, wo hamara hai. He who belongs to Ram is ours too. And this quote is attributed to Acharya Mahamandaleshwar Lakshmi Narayan Tripathi, who is the head of the Kinnar Akhara, as the Indian Express reports. Claiming that her presence in the Akhil Bharatiya Sant Samiti meeting on the Ram Temple issue was not limited to the specific cause, Tripathi said, that, and she adds, and I quote, this is a cause for millions of Sanatanis whose self-respect and dignity is being unconstitutionally taken away by the policies in the country, the state, and central governments. She adds that Ram Mandir is one of the biggest issues for which so many down the years and even today feel sad about. Tripathi also said that it was unconstitutional that temples, mats, our religious places were governed by the government. It is against the constitution of this country and still we are quiet. Ram Mandir has to happen and it will happen. And referring to the Supreme Court verdict on section 377, Tripathi added, whether anybody is gay, lesbian, transgender, whatever is anybody's sexuality, the biggest thing is the Hindu Sanatan Dharma. And the Sanatan Vedic practice has never questioned anyone's sexuality. Our religion has space for everyone. It takes everyone along. The Akhara, she reported, is now set to participate in the Dharma Sabha in Ayodhya, also called by the Akhil Bharatiya Sanatan Samiti on the Ram Temple issue, on November 25th. Responding to the statement and responding to the public video that was being circulated, uh, trans, gender non-conforming and intersex collectives across India strongly condemned the Kinnar Akhara support for the Ram Temple at Ayodhya in India. And that statement is out in the public domain. It can be accessed at Roundtable, uh, at, the, at the website of Roundtable. And uh, it was published on the 24th of November, 2018. On December 17, 2018, the Lok Sabha passed the Transgender Persons Protection of Rights Bill with 27 amendments, the 2016 version. The amended bill, apart from an improved definition of the term transgender, was still unacceptable and 
Communities felt that it needed to be redrafted. Ignoring the critiques of the 2016 bill and subsequent recommendations of the Parliamentary Standing Committee, the bill got passed on December 17, 2018. Meanwhile, we have noticed that in 2017, there were countrywide protests uh, by transgender and gender nonconforming communities and intersex persons. The protests were held in several parts of India, and there was a centralized protest uh, meet in Delhi, followed by uh, the second uh, national protest that was being that got organized in 2018 in Delhi. So December 2017, December 2018, come May 2019, we have the second term of the NDA. Now what happens curiously between August and December 2019 is the transgender bill got introduced in the Lok Sabha on July 19th of 2019. And it got passed on August 5th, 2019, very interesting date, without any debate due to the chaos that was going on in the parliament following the announcement of the abrogation of Article 370 in Jammu and Kashmir on the very same day. In November 2019, it was debated in the Rajya Sabha and was subsequently passed on the 26th of November 2019. We know that following this, during the, during the COVID lockdown, period, we also had the government uh, pass the, bring about the rules to the Transgender Act. Now, for me, what is curious about this timeline is because, I mean, what I did not point out while we were just going through this cursory, cursory timeline is the fact that so many other things were happening parallelly. There was also the Balakot strikes. So there was uh, the whole uh, statement that uh, was made on behalf of the trans community of raising a transgender army and sort of uh, hitting out at Pakistan. Um, and the growing uh, incidence of violence against Dalit, Bahujan, and trans persons, trans murders, that were all happening parallelly and not a single word not a single statement came out from the person uh, whose, uh, whose, uh, whose otherwise public statements uh, I, I just read out. Now, it's interesting because I sort of, uh, we, I see a parallel uh, with the curious, I mean, this for me is the curious case of trans rights as it, as it posits itself in the country today. Because today we have the National Council of transgender persons, which is a non-democratic body in the sense that it has not been uh, uh, convened in, with consultation by the larger transgender communities of India. It is a body that is essentially Brahminical um, with, with no representation from Dalit Bahujan communities uh, on the panel, on, on the board. It is also a panel that many have expressed their fears and apprehensions that it is, uh, it follows a certain ideology and, 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 and the membership that, or the, uh, that has come is based on the ideological affiliations to the, uh, to the, to, to the Hindu right. So it is interesting how, um, you know, if we look at the timeline of what has happened, the flip-flop of the state, the, the, the eventual um, uh, form, you know, the passing of the Trans Act and the formation of the rules. And if you sort of um, draw this parallel, if you, if you sort of do these jump cuts with uh, snip, snippets and, and, and um, moments from what is happening parallelly in the country, it's sort of, it is, it is a story, it is something that is for all of, I mean, it's, it's very clear as daylight. I want to sort of therefore go back to the images that I have sort of selected. And for me, um, and these images are of course over a certain timeline and I can talk about the timeline. And so this is a very, this is an image that we are all perhaps very familiar with. This is 2002, post Gujarat, or when Gujarat was happening. The 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 the, the yeah, post Gujarat. This is uh, 2002. Next image, please. 
this is something quite interesting. This was forwarded in this uh, meme, which is perhaps a very well circulated meme that that was circulated in one of the na uh, in one of the trans groups, WhatsApp groups that some of us are members of. This takes off from Mahabharata. This is a conversation between uh, Dhritarashtra and uh, Sanjay. Sanjay is uh, someone who can who has the divine vision to see what is happening in the Kurukshetra war and is therefore narrating the story uh, to Dhritarashtra uh, who who is uh, visually impaired and, and 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 is relying upon Sanjay's version of the war but interestingly enough and and I have cut out uh, the, the the name of the person who sent it but so so it it it, it says read understand support slash criticize but it sort of talks about hum is ne bill se kisano ka kya fayda hoga sanjay so this this sort of premises itself on the farmers protest the the amendments to the farmers bill and then the the, the conversation that follows there is how sanjay is saying uh, uh, sanjay is talking about about the supposed benefits of these amendments to the farmers bill the farmers, um, um, and, and so Dhritarash asks a very important question, so why are they protesting? And then he talks, he flips the account from, on Mahab, from Mahabharata and sort of flips it and says, uh, I can't read it if you, if, uh, can this be sort of, uh, it says, Kisan agar indraprast me phasal bechega, to shakuni ka commission chala jayega, Maharaj or Hastinapur ka revenue. So it is sort of pinned on this whole, in, on this narrative of how the farmers, delegitimizing the farmers' protests and the concerns that the farmers have forwarded into a, into a sort of a petty uh, fight over losing out on commissions um, that, 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 the, that the farmers as middlemen are kind of um, hoping upon to preserve and to hold on to. So this is a narrative which we know very clearly how this is being sort of forwarded in WhatsApp groups. But this is interesting because this came in a national transgender person's WhatsApp group. And of course, this led to, led to a lot of conversations. I'm not getting into that. But so this is the kind of um, um, messaging that sort of happens constantly uh, even, within, uh, even within the trans uh, spaces. Can we go to the next slide, please? So this again uh, is uh, is a poster that got forwarded into the trans group. It says the maker of the world's first national council of transgender persons, social justice and empowerment department, government of India. We have the name of the person circulating it, who is a member of the uh, of the council, and with due credits in place. So for me, what is interesting is uh, is this trajectory of I mean I can I'll stop because my time's up and uh, I can I can respond I mean um, but what is interesting is the synchronicity of events and what run as parallel threads to what we are seeing as developments and the shift in language between the petitioner um, Mr. Pati uh, representing the Hijra. Uh, gharanas to now this uh, to, to be this uh, representative of what is the kinder voice and what is therefore for me uh, an interesting shift because I think the language is very important here where the Sanatan Dharm seems to be uh, seems to be this this liberating factor which also points to to, to a certain kind of erasure an erasure of the Islamic uh, past that the Hijra Gharanas hold, erasure in terms of language, and also of a uh, of certain, certain kind and a certain type of foregrounding, which sort of premises itself on this 4,000, 5,000 years of history, you know, in, in, into claiming, uh, claiming this uh, legitimacy. So I'm quite curious as to how these trajectories interweave into each other and for us to make our own sets of readings. This is my reading. Thank you.